y'all, Stephanie here with Minimalist Mom Life. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing a video that was requested on what do my kids do all day. So kind of the preface for this question was if we live simply, if we live minimally compared to the normal American family on a middle class income, then what do my kids do? Are they bored? Are they super creative? What has been my experience with this? And I have to say that I did write down a list, of course, because I don't remember anything otherwise, uh, what I feel like my kids do all day and some talking points here. But I want to say that in a lot of amazing toy decluttering videos that I have watched on minimalism or books where I've heard them describing um, simplifying or downsizing the amount of stuff your children have, they describe their personal results in doing that having been things like their kids have amazing attention spans now and they don't fight so much and there's more peace in the house and their kids don't seem overwhelmed or their kids are super duper creative and make up all these amazing things. And I am never going to argue with somebody else's experience, but we have lived minimally since we first started having children, like since my oldest was a baby and even with foster children prior to that. And so I have not <laughs> felt like I have seen those same results with my own family. And this, I'm not saying anything negative about my children, but I'm not, I would not um, brag or boast or say that I in any way necessarily think that they're more creative or that they get along really well, you know, in, in, in a special way. And I like, oh, because of this, they're this way. So since I don't, I don't have a before and after. I don't know what my kids would be like if they had a full blown playroom full of toys. I don't know. Would they fight more or do the way they fight, is that just kind of their sin nature and kids are kids? Like, <laughs> I don't know that they're um, especially creative, but I also don't know that creativity is really going to be some of their strong suits. Like they might just have different strengths and creativity might not be something that they're, you know, especially adapt to. So I just want to preface that because I do feel like the majority of people talking about decluttering and simplifying with your kids list for you all of these great results. And I'm not, again, not knocking that because that's been true for them. That's why they're sharing their experience. I'm just sharing my experience. I don't know that I've seen any of those things, but um, that's not to say that I don't think that it's worthwhile. Obviously I do, or we wouldn't live like this. Uh, I'm kind of, I guess in some ways banking on that this is better than it could be if we weren't doing it this way, but it's certainly not perfect. Living simply does not take away sin. It does not take away the struggle of our selfish desires, of our, it doesn't make us content even, like that's a heart issue, that's not just a stuff issue. And so all of these things are great for our surroundings and certainly they can affect our mental health and well-being, but they are not, minimalism is not the end all be all answer to everything in your life. And I always just wanna make that really clear. I do feel like in a lot of ways, minimalism is being pushed as almost a secondary gospel, and it's just not that. Okay, that was a three minute ramble on all of that. Now to get to what I've actually written down to talk about, but what do my kids do all day? So the number one thing, and this has been since they were like born, is my kids spend a ton of time outside. A ton of time outside. Um, in each house that we've had, the house has been small, 1,200 to 1,300 square feet, but we've always had a good backyard, like a great size backyard. And my kids have grown up outside with me taking them to the park, to the beach, to the river, to the pool, and just doing so many things in our backyard. I did do the 1,000 hours outside challenge with our littlest guy um, because I wanted to make sure that he was getting just as much time as my big kids that were free to go out back without me having to watch them. And um, we hit it in like nine months. And that's without super trying. It was just tracking it. And um, we just love being outside. And I think that that... That might be a piece that I do think is affected by how much stuff you have in your home. Like the outdoors might be more appealing, but I think that's less about the amount of toys that we have in our home and probably more about our limited use of technology that encourages my kids to go outside and be outside. Also with a smaller home, there's just far more freedom in the backyard where you can run and jump and bounce balls and chase people and hide than there is in a smaller space, especially when there's a lot of kids and I have five kids. So the number one thing that they do is they spend a ton of time outside. We don't have a ton of things outside either, but we do have a basketball hoop that my boys adore. They like to play football, they like to ride bikes, they like to ride scooters. Um, we have a little slide, we've had different swing sets that have always gotten broken, but my kids have always enjoyed those as well. We 
homeschool. So there's a part of the day that's school. And while we do take a summer break, it's not as long as like the public school system. And I tend to keep a little bit of summer school going just for the structure for quite a bit of the summer even break that we're on. And so they have that to do every day. My kids do have chores they do every day. And these are very, very, very minimal. <laughs> I shared in one of my other videos. It's probably an area that I could work on with my kids more is involving them more in some of those tasks. Uh, my boys have a little landscaping business, Wolfpack Landscaping, and they are responsible for, I think it's about five families' lawns um, at this point that they do either once a month or every other week or something like that. Dad takes them and they do that. So that's something they have. They have loved that. They have learned so much, just not about money, but dealing with people and, of course, yard work and taking care of things. They love to be with friends. So they have friends over. We have a, if your friends are on at dinner time, you are allowed to invite them to dinner always policy in our house. We have a lot of different kids that are at our dinner table on different nights. They love to have friends over after church on Sunday or go to their friends' houses after church on Sunday. After homeschool group, they're always asking me to bring somebody home and the answer is usually yes. They have friends in our neighborhood. Um, they're able to go down to a close park by us. I can take them down there. So they're with friends a lot. Um, and in playing with friends too. I know some people are concerned that their house is going to be boring if they don't have as many toys as that friend's house. That has not been my experience. Now, your house, just like your kids, are not going to be the friend for everybody. Like they're not gonna be everybody's favorite person. Everybody's gonna have their preferences. So I'm not saying there will never be a kid that doesn't come to your house and complain that you don't have video games. We have zero video games at our house. I will never <laughs> want or allow video games in my house. Just a personal pet peeve of mine. So that's not something that we do if a kid objected to that, like, oh well. Um, but in the reality, my house, when they have my kids have friends over, it feels like a party because there's so many of my kids so close in age and they almost always spend the majority of it in the backyard playing sports, shooting Nerf guns, running around like a whole bunch of banshees, or they eat all my food and they build Legos. So lots of times with friends, um, and we go places a lot. So I've not, again, saying that anyone else needs to do this, but I am an extrovert. I love being with people. I like to get out of the house every day, even if it's just to go to the park or go meet friends to go um, hike up one of the little mountains we have around here or something like that. But we get out of the house often. So after homeschool and chores and the kids have done their reading or whatever, then we're often going somewhere, coming home, it's quiet time, and then there's playtime and then it's dinner. So it's not like we have this 10 hour day where I'm asking them to play with, you know, two trains or something like life is happening. Like we're doing and going and going to the library and again, going to friends' houses, going to meet up with homeschool groups, appointments, you know, whatever it is, church, stuff like that, sports. My kids all play sports. And that certainly takes up a decent amount of time. And then I want them to have a certain amount of downtime. <laughs> so there's that. As far as, oh, the other two that I have are, are funny. As far as, what our kids actually have as toys. I will do a house tour like I've shared. Um, my boys are seven, eight, and nine, and my seven-year-old is about to be eight as well. So the real toy stage for them is gone. <laughs> they, one of my boys still enjoys getting toys, but you know, loses interest quickly. And then um, we keep two bins of Legos, and I have often contemplated not having them because I felt like they never use them. And just as I felt like for five months they haven't touched them, they'll go through a season where they really enjoy building a whole bunch of cars and houses and they kind of hyper-focus on Legos for a few days and then Legos are put to the side. Um, but they are a toy that I would keep for hospitality purposes too, like that you always have something that kids could do in your home. So they do play Legos. Occasionally my kids get into Art Hub for Kids where they can learn how to draw on YouTube and I like that for all the fun things I can draw. I don't like it because it's YouTube, so I have to sit there and make sure that it stays on that exact video and nothing else. Um, you know, it's not something I can just let them have the freedom to do. So they like art. Sometimes my daughter has some toys, but honestly, she doesn't play toys. Um, different kids, I will say too. I feel like the personality of your kid also dictates their interest in toys and maybe just their engagement in toys. My first four have not been big toy kids. They've been big outdoor kids. They'll like one or two toys quite a bit, but not, I mean, they're not asking for even like lots of things like that. My boys love to go fishing. I take them fishing often. My daughter has dolls and a couple of Barbies and it's about to be her birthday and she's gonna get new toys and I'm hoping that she has more interest in those. She doesn't have a sister, so I think sometimes she doesn't play with toys as much because she doesn't have a playmate for those things. 
Um, and then my little guy who just turned three is enjoying toys. And I actually feel like he probably enjoys toys more than my other boys did and spends a little bit more time playing with those. And so he really enjoys his tractors, his dump trucks, construction trucks, stuff like that. And he's getting better about, you know, playing without having to have someone play with him. Um, but the other big thing that my kids do all day, especially a couple of them, is follow me around. <laughs> And they want to talk to me and they want to ask me a million questions and they want to tell me things and they want to see what I'm doing and they maybe want to do part of it and they're just with me and I will admit I am not a perfect mom at all. You'll already know that and sometimes that can be a struggle for me not to feel like why won't you just go do something but toys is not the answer. More stuff is not the answer. Your children are following you around because either they want connection or they're bored and that's an important thing for them to go through boredom so that the creativity can spark and the self direction, self motivation can spark to where they figure out something else to do. And certainly I can be, suggest a few things for them to do, but then it's, it's up to them. And that's part of even having downtime where they can have some, you know, 30 minutes where like, I don't really know what to do. I'm gonna follow mom around. You know, you can chalk it up to their learning how to run a household because they're seeing what you're doing. And then, it's sanctifying for you to be a patient mom when you're like, oh my goodness, I have all these little ducklings always right next to me. So following me around is a part of what they do all day, but it's not something that I think would be fixed simply by getting more stuff. Um, my kids do get screen time. I forget if I've already answered this on here or on Instagram. I think it was on Instagram, but so my kids do get screen time. We don't do like computer games or video games, anything like that. This is not a judgment on you if you don't. Every parent has something that they don't want or don't do in their household. That's just mine, one of them. <laughs> um, but they do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and sometimes Friday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, my four big kids, during the afternoon when I call it quiet time, which is when I'm making this video, is when they get screen time. And so they can either pick a show um, or part of a movie or depending on the day, maybe even a whole movie if mommy's really being crazy. And the house goes quiet, the blinds get shut in the living room, people get blankets out, the cats cuddle up to them, and it is quiet time. And the purpose of that time is for me to have my lunch break, a little bit of break, since no one's really napping anymore. If my littlest guy is having a season like he is right now, or he is napping in the afternoons, and that's when he's going to nap, um, Friday would be his day, because he's the fifth five days, and he would get to pick, in theory, I mean, he's three, so shows are still to him, um, what he would watch. And... I know I got asked this on Instagram. Yes. When one kid is picking, like on Monday is Martin's day, the other kids do get to watch with him what he picks, but it's his day to get to pick. We don't do television in the evenings or on the weekends usually. I used to have a habit of some Sunday mornings because my kids wake up at like 6 a.m. on Sunday and churches until 10, but they would get to watch cartoons, but we have gotten rid of that habit. And then Saturday, there's no need for TV. Dad's home and available too, and I don't take that lunch break in theory but so they do get that little bit of television time as well I don't want to make it sound like they spend all their time outside or following me around or doing chores or something they do get that time so that is what my kids do all day uh, I don't know if I said this yet but I will do my house tour at some point where you can see that they do have toys they do have stuff especially in a small home where you see a lot of it in one small space because they're not in their own rooms I think you will find that it looks quite normal if you are into simple living or minimalism or whatever it is you call it. I would love to hear what you feel like your kids do all the day. Is it is it similar? Is it different? If you've been somebody that had a lot more and then you declutter and you have that really amazing before and after of what life has been like with a bunch of stuff with kids versus with less, then certainly share your own little testimony down in the comments and I will talk to y'all next time.